Hare Krishna everyone, Radishyam, we are continuing to read the teachings of Lord Chaitanya by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 12, The Devotee, page number 129. Hmm. Devotional service may be regulative or affectionate. One who has not developed transcendental affection for Krishna should conduct his life according to scriptural injunctions and under the guidance of the spiritual master. In Srimad Bhagavatam 2.1.5, Shukadeva Goswami advises Maharaj Parikshit. Tasmad Bharata Sam Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishvaro Hari Shrutavyah Kirtita Vyascha Smartavyascha Chatabhayam Quote, O best of the Bharatas, it is the prime duty of persons who want to become fearless to hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, and to chant about Him and always remember Him. Unquote. Lord Vishnu is always to be remembered and is not to be forgotten for even a moment. This is the sum and substance of all regulative principles. The conclusion is that when all the rules, regulations and recommended and prohibited activities in the revealed scriptures are taken together, remembrance of the Supreme Lord is always the essence of everything. Very important, isn't it? To always remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead within one's heart is the main practice of devotional service. And in that practice, there are no regulative principles. There are no do's and don'ts. However, one should generally Accept the following principles to properly execute devotional service. The devotee should number 1. Take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. 2. Receive initiation from the spiritual master. 3. Serve the spiritual master. 4. Inquire and learn love from the spiritual master. 5. Follow in the footsteps of holy persons devoted to the transcendental loving service of the Lord. 6. Be prepared to give up all kinds of enjoyment and suffer all kinds of miseries for the satisfaction of Krishna. 7. Live in a place where Krishna had his pastimes. 8. Be satisfied by whatever is sent by Krishna for the maintenance of the body and not hanker for more than that. 9. Observe fasting on Ekadashi day. In brackets, this occurs on the 11th day after the full moon and the 11th day after the new moon. On such days, no grains, cereals or beans are eaten. Simply vegetables and milk are moderately taken and the chanting of Hare Krishna and reading of scriptures are increased. Brackets closed. And 10. Show respect to devotees, cows and sacred trees like the banyan tree. It is essential, essential for a neophyte devotee who is beginning to follow the path of devotional service to observe these ten principles. The eleventh principle is to try to avoid offenses in serving the Lord and in chanting His holy names. There are ten kinds of offenses in the matter of chanting the holy name. First, to blaspheme a devotee of the Lord. Second, 
to consider the Lord and the demigods on the same level, or to think there are many gods. So many times it's considered like when I was studying in Russian embassy in high school, my teacher, my English teacher, because we studied like it was English in depth because it's an embassy school. My English teacher one time expressed that he doesn't understand the fact that in India there are many gods. And he was looking at me, he was like, God is one. And I was looking at him and I didn't say anything. I was like, yes, <laughs> because I was a... Uh, how was I? How old was I? I was like 16. No, I was younger. 15, 16 years old. I couldn't really say anything because... Um, I'm not used to talking back to teachers, but in my mind I was like, of course, we as Hare Krishnas, we also believe that God is one. <laughs> Maybe if I would be in the same situation right now, I would have a lot of things to say and I would preach to him for hours, but back then I was like, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> because in India, even my husband was telling me that it's considered that any god you worship is the same. Ganesh Ji, Durga Devi, Lord Shiva, Hanumanji, they're all the same gods. Pick one <laughs> and worship. But uh, no, it's an offense to the holy name. Third, to neglect the orders of the spiritual master. Fourth, to minimize the authority of the scriptures, the Vedas. Fifth, to interpret the holy names of God. Sixth, to commit sins, sins on the strength of the holy name, on the strength of chanting. Seventh, to instruct the glories of the Lord's names to the unfaithful. Eighth, to compare the chanting of the holy name to material piety. Ninth, to be inattentive while chanting the holy name. And tenth, to remain attached to material things in spite of chanting the holy names. These ten offenses against the holy name should be avoided. The twelfth principle in the execution of devotional service is that one should avoid the association of unholy non-devotees. Thirteenth, one should not attempt to have many disciples. Fourteenth, one should not take the trouble to understand many books or to understand partially any particular book. And one should avoid discussing different doctrines. Fifteenth, one should be equipoised both in gain and in loss. Sixteenth, one should not be subject to any kind of lamentation. Seventeenth, one should not disrespect the demigods or other scriptures. Eighteenth, one should not tolerate blasphemy against the Supreme Lord or his devotees. No toleration. Nineteenth, one should avoid ordinary topics of novels and fiction, but there is no injunction that one should avoid hearing ordinary news. 20. One should not give any trouble to any living creature, even a small bug. The first 10 of the 20 items mentioned above are affirmative and the second 10 are prohibitive. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu compiled by Srila Rupa Goswami, it is said that one should be very liberal in behavior and should avoid any undesirable activities. Of the 20 regulations, the most important are the first three. To accept the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, to be initiated by him and serve him. Jai. 
In addition to these 20, there are 35 more items of devotional service and they can be analyzed as follows. Number one, hearing about the Lord. Two, chanting about Him. Three, remembering Him. Four, worshiping Him. Five, praying to Him. Six, serving Him. Seven, engaging as a servitor. Eight, being friendly towards Him. Nine, offering everything to Him. Ten, dancing before the deity. 11. Singing before the deity. 12. Informing the deity of one's thoughts. I really like this one. Uh, 13th. Offering obeisances to the deity. 14th. Standing up to show respect to the deity and the devotees. 15. Following a devotee when he gets up to go to the door. I love this one also. 16. I love each one of them, but I'm just. 16. Entering the temple of the Lord. 17. Circumambulating the temple of the Lord. 18. Reciting prayers to the Lord. 19. Vibrating hymns in his honor. 20. Performing Sankirtana or congregational chanting of the holy name. Haribo! 21. Smelling the incense and flowers offered to the deity. 22. Accepting prasadam, food offered to Krishna. 23. Attending the arati ceremony. 24. Seeing the deity. 25. Offering palatable foodstuffs to the Lord. 26. Meditating on the Lord. 27. Offering water to the Tulsi tree. 28. Offering respect to the Vaishnavas or advanced devotees. 29. Living in Mathura or Vrindavan. 30. Understanding Srimad Bhagavatam. 31. Trying one's utmost to attain Krishna. 32. Expecting the mercy of Krishna. Jai. You know, sometimes they say, you will never be disappointed in life if you just stop expecting anything, right? Live without expectations. It's a commonly known motto. But here it says that it's, it's an item of devotional service to expect the mercy of Krishna. So if you don't want to expect anything, you can at least expect the mercy of Krishna. That's something to expect. <laughs> 33. Joining with devotees in performing Krishna ceremonial functions. 34. Surrendering to the Lord in all respects. 35. Observing different ceremonial functions and vows. To these 35 items are added another four. Another four. First, marking one's body with sandalwood pulp to show that one is a Vaishnava. Two, painting one's body with the holy names of the Lord. Three, covering one's body with the remnants of the deity's coverings. Number four, Sipping Charinamrita, Charinamrita, the water that has washed the deity. These four additional items make 39 items for devotional service in all. And out of all of these, the following five are most important. First, to associate with devotees. Second, to chant the holy name of the Lord. Three. Third. To hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Fourth. To live in a holy place such as Mathura or Vrindavan. And fifth. To serve the deity with great devotion. These items are especially mentioned by Rupa Goswami in his book 
Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The 39 items above plus these 5 items total 44 items. Add to these the 20 preliminary items and there are a total of 64 items for conducting devotional service. The devotional service of one who adopts these 64 items with his body, mind and senses gradually becomes pure. Some of these items are completely distinct from others, some are identical and other, others appear to be mixed. Okay. We will continue tomorrow. We will continue tomorrow reading about what Srila Rupa Goswami recommends further in our practice of devotional service. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Please check out our website shravanamdiaries.com and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Dandavats.